Okay, so uh, as you probably expected, now we're going to talk about geometric series. So we've done arithmetic sequences and series, and now we're going to finish off doing geometric sequences and series. Uh, you can already probably guess what a geometric series is, um, so that's good. And then we'll, we'll define it in a bit more detail in a moment and see how we can find the general formula, which is actually quite nice, um, and then use it. So to just start off, um, consider the following scenario, uh, very realistic. You've got a cookie and you're going to eat half and then you're also going to give a quarter of the total to a friend and you're also going to give an eighth to another friend and a sixteenth to another friend and so on and you're going to keep giving that out until there's no cookie left or uh, you know when the value of the cookie becomes negative effectively. Under that paradigm of going a half half each time, how many friends, uh, assuming that, you know that I have no limit on friends, what is the number I can theoretically feed? So have a think about that. You may already know the answer straight away, but also can you justify it to yourself? Uh, why is it the case? So give it a go. Have a think about it. OK, so the answer in this case uh, is actually infinite there. And that is uh, a perfectly valid answer, uh, at least within the realm of mathematics, not in the real world. Um, I said ignore things like physics, because obviously in the universe, matter is not infinitely divisible. Uh, but eventually uh, you won't be able to split things. But in mathematics, you can. So the visualization for this, I think, is quite nice. Uh, is if you just imagine your cookie as effectively being um, a, a square, then when I give away that half, I've effectively done this. I've, I've done a half and then a quarter I've now eat, I've eaten or given away that much. And then an eighth is this. And then a sixteenth is this. So that is to say this box here is one sixteenth the area of the original box. Right. Um, and we can keep doing that. This is uh, 1 32th, this is 1 64th, 1 2 8th, and so on. And as you notice, it's getting infinitely, infinitely closer and closer to filling the full square, but it never will. Uh, and that's actually a, a geometric proof that the sum of these terms is going to end up uh, converging to 1, effectively. Um, this infinity concept is actually going to be something we'll look at more in the next session because geometric series is interesting enough that we're going to look at it a bit more in detail. Um, but effectively, mathematically, what we're saying here is a half plus a quarter plus an eighth plus a sixteenth. If you do that infinitely, it's just equal to one. And what I've written here is not shorthand. This is a legitimate mathematical statement. And the equal sign is in fact an equal sign. OK, um, so this is what we're going to be looking at is this concept. As you know, this what I've got here, this sequence of numbers is geometric. It's being multiplied by a half each time. And what I've done is not only have I expressed the sequence, but I've now added it up and hence it's a series. So we're going to look a bit more geometric series. So just before we dive into geometric series, um, I want to just go back a little bit uh, to clear up a little bit of ambiguity. If you remember last time, um, I had a legitimate question about um, when I talk about, for example, the fifth term of a series. So thinking back to arithmetic series, does that mean the fifth term of the underlying arithmetic sequence? What does it mean, the fifth term of the series itself? Uh, and if you're already confused by what I'm asking, then that means we need this clarification. Um, what I effectively want to say about all that is I taught it to you, in my opinion, the legitimate way, uh, the way that it's actually taught uh, within mathematics, how it's understood. But unfortunately, and I am mildly bitter about this, the textbook uses different terminology. And 
I have to swallow my pride and go with what the textbook says because the textbook and also the edXL exam board are consistent. They use that terminology. And at the end of the day, you want to pass your exams. You want to pass exam questions. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remind you of how I defined it and then show you the slight subtlety in how the textbook and how the edXL exam board defines it. And hopefully that will clear up that bit of confusion. So I'm going to do it through an example. Uh, if I make up an, an um, and I'm going to talk about arithmetic here. Um, if I make up an arithmetic sequence, let's say uh, this one, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and so on. OK, so the A was 4 and the D is 2. What I then said was, um, uh, this is first, this is second, this is third, fourth, and fifth. And I also said uh, these are called uh, U1, U2, U3, U4, and U5. Okay. So far, there's no disagreement, by the way. This is all still fine. Um, and then I said uh, a series is the sum up to that point of that sequence. And I said, okay, the first one's four, and then we've got 10, and then we've got 14. Uh, am I doing that right? No. Nope. Uh, four plus six plus eight is 18, uh, and then 28, and then 40. Okay. And I said, you've now got a new sequence, and this is the series, right? I said, this is the uh, sequence and this is the series. And this, um, we then call them S1, S2, S3, S4, and S5. Okay. And this is still the first, second, uh, so on. Okay. So that's how I taught it to you. Um, and if it makes sense, it's because it does make sense. And that is, is how it is actually defined mathematically. However, uh, within the textbook, this is how they'll, they'll, they'll talk about it. They'll say, right, that's not how you should visualize a series. OK, now, to be clear, be used to both methods and just acknowledge that one of them is the one way mathematics accepts it and the other way is is just you know exam board terminology instead they say the series is like taking the sequence but replace all the commas with plus signs so your series isn't actually a list of numbers it's just this this sort of list of numbers with pluses in it okay i'm trying to not uh <laughs> be too annoyed at the terminology. Okay, so they say this is the series. The difference is instead of commas, there's plus signs. So when you talk about the terms in a series, it's basically the same thing again. It's the same numbers. Okay. So you got the same numbers, but then you introduce this concept of adding them up by saying this thing here is S1 and this thing here is S2, and this thing here, which is the sum of the first three terms, is S3, and so on, okay? So it kind of, it's just a different visualization, right? The, con the underlying concept is the same, but the visualization of it, the mental model is different, which also then means that the way the English is phrased is sometimes a little bit different, depending on which mental model you've got. So stick with, and this is my exam advice now, stick with that mental model. Just readjust a little bit from what I told you before and readjust to that. And hopefully from then on, the textbook questions will make a bit more sense. OK, um, all the formulas and everything is all the same. Uh, ultimately, what a series is, is still the same thing. It's the sum of a sequence. OK, so you haven't been told wrong. You've just been perhaps given a, a slightly confusing mental model. Um, so uh, that's it, really. Uh, I'm just going to give you then one example to just clarify this a bit. So this was uh, a question on arithmetic 
so we've taken a pause on geometric for a moment. This is uh, an example of arithmetic series. I gave it to you last time. And it said here, the fifth term of an arithmetic series is 33. The 10th term is 68. Okay, under my interpretation, it, it, you'll get the wrong answer. Okay, and I keep calling it mine, it's not mine, it's mathematics interpretation, but you'll get the wrong answer. So what you need to do is visualize this the following way. Your series is, it's something plus something plus something plus something plus 33, that's the fifth, plus, so it's just pluses instead of commas, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, uh, and the tenth is 68, okay? So this is the series. And then the question is, uh, the sum of the first n terms is 2225, show that this. Okay, um, so what they're basically saying is, go the way up to some nth term. And you're going to end up with 2225. Okay, and for that, you would uh, use, uh, you'd use uh, the formula, you would use the, you know, the n over 2, 2a plus n minus 1d. But first, you would have to find your a, and you'd have to find your d, okay? And your a is going to be this one here, and your d is going to be the amount that you're hopping each time. And to get those, you're going to have to use the a plus n minus 1d formula, okay? So hopefully that clarifies it a little bit. Um, I just needed to make that, that clarification so that you're hopefully not any further confused. Long story short, in your mind, when you're thinking about sequences and series, think of sequences as having a bunch of commas and think of series as having a bunch of plus signs. And then the numbering of them as first, second, third is basically the same. Okay, so that's how the exam board wants you to think about it. Okay, so with my hopefully informative rant over, let's get on with uh, the geometric series. Okay, so... Um, I hope you've had a moment to process what I've just told you. Um, give yourself a break for a minute or two if you think you need to. Let's look at geometric series now. So we said a geometric series starts with A. Um, oh sorry, a geometric sequence starts with A. Then you've got AR. Then you've got AR squared, AR cubed, so on. And then we have AR to the N minus one. Okay, that is the geometric sequence, the general form of a geometric sequence. The series is therefore A plus AR plus AR squared plus AR cubed plus dot 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 plus AR to the N minus one. Okay, and that is a geometric uh, series. And again, uh, we can use the notation, say u1, u2, u3, if you want to. Um, you won't always use that notation, but it might be useful sometimes. And here we're gonna call that the sum to one. And this one is the sum up to two of them. This one's sum up to three. And all of them here to n terms is the sum to n. Okay. So that's our definition of a geometric series. Take the sequence, but just add the stuff up. So now, um, if you remember last time, uh, with arithmetic series, we talked about that Gauss trick, which was a really nice trick for basically being able to add up any number of, a, of an arithmetic sequence um, by coupling things together and then counting the number of couples and the size of the couples and doing a multiplication. There's a similar trick for being able to find the sum of a geometric series up to n terms. Um, I say, did I say similar trick? It's not, it's not the same type of trick, but it's, it's similarly interesting. There's a, there's a trick to it effectively. It's not necessarily obvious if you haven't seen it before. Um, it's an example in the textbook. We're going to skip that example. I'll just do it here. 
Um, it's important for you to know how to do it. Um, so do try and follow along. We're going to start off with um, defining what we mean by the sum to n terms. So I'm just basically going to write out a little bit what we had a moment ago. The sum to n terms of a geometric series is a plus ar plus ar squared plus ar cubed plus dot 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 uh, ar to the n minus 1. What I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to, within that dot dot dot, I'm going to just pull out one more of the terms and make it visible, if that makes sense. And I'll also include the AR to the N minus two, right? Um, why I've done that will become clear in a moment. Um, it's exactly the same as, you know, whether I'd include the AR cubed or not. The sequence is the same. I've just been a let, I've just included less in the dot, dot, dots. So this is the sum to N terms. So if I asked you, oh, you know, A is three, R is five, find the sum to 10 terms, that would be very annoying. You'd have to do all, the, all these various terms and add them all up. So we want a formula, a closed form expression. And here's the trick we're gonna do. Each of the steps I'm doing now are gonna seem perhaps like they come out of nowhere, but then at the end, it's all gonna make sense. So if you're confused about why I'm doing this, don't worry, that make, it's, it's right to be confused, but you'll see why it works. I'm gonna multiply both sides of this equation by R. So I get R times SN equals, and now let's multiply all of these terms up, up there by R. So A goes to AR, AR goes to AR squared, AR squared goes to AR cubed, this AR cubed is AR to the four. I've still got dot, dot, dot. AR to the N minus one is AR, sorry, AR to the N minus two is AR to the N minus one. And finally, I've got an AR to the N now. Okay, so I've got a new, I've got a, the top equation and then a new equation on the bottom. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say do that minus this and it's going to be equal to this minus that which is a, a completely legitimate thing to do right it's like when you do simultaneous equations you take both the left hand sides and find the difference and you take both the right hand sides and find the difference and you equate those differences it's legit. So we'll do that here. I've got SN minus RSN is equal to, and now imagine uh, that top one here, and I'm gonna take away what's on the bottom. And you can see already a lot of stuff is gonna cancel out. For instance, this one here minus that one is gonna go to zero. So I'm gonna cancel that out. This AR squared and this AR squared are going to cancel. AR cubed and AR cubed cancels. There's an AR4 somewhere here in the dot dot dots. It's going to cancel with that one, right? That AR to the N minus two will cancel with something in the dot dot dots. That AR to the N minus one cancels with this one. So all I'm left with after I take all that away is an A and an AR to the N. So we get this. A minus AR to the N, okay? So we had those two big equations and I took both sides away from each other. I end up with this. And now what's nice about this is I can factor out SN, right? SN is just a number ultimately, right? Um, and we get this. And now I'm gonna divide by one minus R. And then as a final step, um, I'm gonna take out that A because it's common at the top and the bottom. So we get A times one minus R to the N all over one minus R, okay? And we've done it. This is our formula for SN, okay? The sum to N terms of a geometric sequence is that. And you may sometimes see it in the other another form um, which is like this, but hopefully you can see that's exactly the same. You've just multiplied the top and bottom by minus one. Again, probably in the formula book, again, 
this is a formula you remember rather than you rely on the formula book for because if you haven't remembered it by the time you have an exam it means you haven't revised enough because you're going to use this a lot whenever you're doing problems on sequences and series so um yeah we'll, we'll start remembering it soon as we as we use it more and more okay obviously for the time being you won't immediately remember it uh, and that's it that's our formula for the session that's our formula for the day and it's what we're going to be using to answer some examples and some questions so uh, let's give it a go so we're going to find the sums of the following geometric series uh, 2 plus 6 plus 18 and so on for 10 terms and then this one here where they kind of specify the beginning and specify the end but they don't tell us how many terms there are um, let me just write the formula sn one more time up here so we've got it on screen uh, so we can start getting it into our brains uh, sometimes i might do one minus r sometimes r minus one it doesn't matter as long as the top matches so looking at a um part a what's our first term it's two what is our r it's three multiplying by three each time so this is easy the sum to 10 terms is and we use the formula uh, a is 2 times 3 to the power of 10 minus 1 down here all over um, 10 minus 1 I'm just going to point out by the way uh, you've now got four formulas so far in in the last couple of days you've had the arithmetic series formula uh, sequence formula the series formula the geometric sequence formula and the geometric series formula um, within those sometimes you'll have uh, r minus one and sometimes you'll have or oh, sorry sometimes you'll have n minus one and sometimes you'll just have n so be aware that you sometimes have one sometimes you have the other um, for instance in this formula it's r to the n and that minus one is not in the power it's it's down below right it's r to the n and then minus one so try not to get confused i feel like that's a common error for instance this is not three to the power of nine it's three to the ten and then you just take one off so then that's a job for the calculator um that's what we get three to the ten uh, minus one times two divided by nine um oops so I, I just did that on the calculator and I didn't get an integer, which means I've made a mistake. Um, the mistake I've made is I put an N here, whereas the formula clearly tells me to put an R. So that was, that was silly of me. So that's a three there. Let's try that again. Um, okay, and I get 59048. Okay, and that's it. That's the answer to A. It is... Uh, a sum of the first 10 terms is 59048. So now on to part B. Um, so this sequence, it, it's a bit ugly. It sort of goes from bigger numbers to smaller numbers, uh, multiplying by minus a half each time. Um, what I'd actually suggest is you could reinterpret this, uh, and the textbook does not do this. Um, so feel free to look at the textbook way of doing it and then you've seen both methods but i actually would personally if it's a sum a finite sum the order doesn't matter right so this is exactly the same as saying uh one plus dot 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 um minus one two eight plus two five six minus five one two plus ten twenty four right that's actually the same it's not the same sequence but when I find the sum, it will be the same series total. So I'd prefer to do it that way um, as a bit of a cheat. So then the first term is one. The common ratio in this case is gonna be uh, minus two because it's doubling, but then flipping the sign each time. Note that if it was the other way around, I'd have the first term 1024 and the common ratio minus a half, which is not as nice. So I prefer this one. Then the question is uh, to sum up the series. Um, 
so you want to ask yourself first of all how many terms are there they didn't tell us there's just some dot dot dots so we don't know how how many we're doing um, you could maybe figure it out with a bit of trial and error on the calculator but that's a dangerous method in case the question gets more difficult and you want to have a general method so what we're instead going to do is say uh, well here my mth term let's call this one my mth is 1024 so let's write the general expression ar to the m minus 1 equals 1024 and let's figure out what that n is uh, we've got 1 as a so basically we've got this minus 2 to the m minus 1 equals 1024 Now, again, at this point, you could potentially use your intuition. You could say, oh, well, I know 2 to the 10 is 1024. So, you know, n must be 11 or something like this. But let's do the general method. We have to be careful here because can we actually take log of both sides? Because if I do that, I'll end up with the log of a negative number, which doesn't exist. So what we can do is um, we can basically think about the fact that well, if I'm going to take minus 2 to the m minus 1 and it ends up giving me a positive number, then that's equivalent to answering the question 2 to the m minus 1 equals 1024, right? If n satisfies this top one, it will also satisfy this bottom version. And now I'm allowed to take log of both sides. Okay, so it's a bit of a subtlety there. Um, that's not to say these equations are the same, but for the specific n we're looking for, if the top one works, then the bottom one works. Um, so now we can do log of both sides, and I'll just take the power down in one go. We end up with this. Um, and at this point, I'll let you finish it off. You can then divide the logs, add one. You will end up with n equals 11 in this case. Okay, or if you don't like that method, for the simpler cases, it's fine for you to use a bit of intuition um, as long as you've double checked that it works. So we've got n is 11, um, and now we need the sum. So we're going to work out the following. Uh, the sum to 11 equals a, which is 1, times minus 2 to the 10. Uh, take away 1 all over, so I'm using this formula, right? Uh, r minus 1 minus 2 minus 1. So it's minus 2 to the 10, minus 1, all over minus 3. And what did I do? I just did the exact mistake I told you not to do, uh, which is don't confuse n with n minus 1 if it's not the case in the formula. So this is not a 10, this is an 11. Uh, I do that on the calculator. Minus 2 to the power of 11. Uh, minus 1 divided by minus 3 and we've got the answer 683 okay so that's it 59048 for the first and 683 for the second okay last example before you try some questions uh, another one of these when does it exceed a value questions so hopefully not too bad this is a series, notice all the plus signs um, rather than commas. Found the least value of n such that that sum uh, exceeds 2 million. So um, how many, basically how many even numbers do you have to add up before you get more than 2 million? Uh, it's an interesting question in itself. In this case, a is one, oops, a is one and r is two therefore the sum to n is uh, a times r to the n which is two to the n minus one all over r minus one uh, the one on the top and there's also two minus one gives me one on the bottom we actually just get this which is quite a nice expression um, it's quite an interesting one actually isn't it if you take the sum of any number of even numbers, you'll get one less than the next one, right? So notice 1 plus 2 is 1 less than 4. 1 plus 2 plus 4 
is 1 less than 8. Um, I quite like that, but anyway, so it's 2 to the n minus 1 is the sum to n. We're saying that needs to exceed 2 million. Uh, so let's do adding 1 to both sides. So 2 to the n is greater than 2 million and 1. Log of both sides, take the n down, so we end up with um, n log 2 is greater than log of 2 million and 1. Uh, so that implies um, n must be bigger than log of 2 million 1 divided by log of 2, which is on the calculator. Um, Twenty point nine something. So, what's the first integer that satisfies that inequality uh, bigger than twenty point nine? It's twenty one. So that's it. Twenty one. Uh, if you add up the first twenty one even numbers, you'll get more than two million uh, at that point. Uh, and in this case, it's quite specific. What's the value of n? So we don't need to actually figure out what the number is. Uh, if we wanted to, it's actually not that hard. It would just be 2 to the 21 minus 1. If we're curious, let's try it. 2 to the 21 minus 1. It's, uh, it's this. So that if you were, uh, yeah, if you add up 21 even numbers, you'll get that. Okay, let's do some questions ourselves. Okay, so all questions are on this slide. It's just the one. Um, you can give it a go. The first uh, is quite simple, just testing you to use the formula. Uh, the second one is using those log uh, tricks. So number five, you need to use log. Uh, number seven is uh, similar to that, but uh, with, I suppose, a little bit more work involved. And then number eight is where you have to use a little bit more problem solving to think about how you're going to do that one. Set up the appropriate equations so you can solve it. Okay, so give those a go. Let me know if you run into trouble. You can pause the video now.